Now for cosecant and secant. Let's erase some of this. Here's our graph of secant. We get So there's secant, and we find, or I'm sorry, this is cosecant. We find that cosecant is the same as secant, just shifted pi over two to the right. So this equals secant x minus pi over two, which can also be written as secant pi over two minus x. Plus cosecant is secant pi over two minus x, and secant is cosecant pi over two minus x. And there we go, there are all our co-function identities. So sine and cosine get paired, and each of them is equal to the other one with a shift of pi over two. And we express that as pi over two minus x tangent and cotangent get paired, and cosecant and secant get paired. Again, we see the same shift in all of them. So these should be fairly easy to remember. Okay, and then we have period identities. Because these are periodic functions, they repeat. Sine repeats every two pi. Thus, sine of x is also gonna be equal to sine of x plus two pi. We could shift it a full period, which is also equal to sine of x plus four pi, and so on and so forth. Same thing happens with cosine. Cosine repeats after two pi. So we get the same wave. So cosine of x also equals cosine of x plus two pi, which equals cosine of x plus four pi. So we get sine is equal to sine of x plus two pi. Cosine is also cosine x plus two pi. All right, now let's look at secant and cosecant. Cosecant also does not repeat until we've gone through two pi. So cosecant of x equals cosecant x plus two pi. Secant, we see the same issue. It's not until we go through two pi that we actually start to repeat our pattern. So secant x is gonna be the same as a secant graph shifted an entire period. Thus cosecant is cosecant x plus two pi. Secant is the same as secant x plus two pi. Now what about tangent and cotangent? These are a little special. For tangent, 